You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the rumor mill is buzzing out of control. (laughs) Radio show hosts across the nation are babbling about uh, things that uh, they don't even know what they're talking about. The Patriot Facts Network is uh, full of baloney. And... uh, Well, I don't, uh, I really don't know what else to tell you (laughs) other than to sort of set it straight. When this series of raids first started, ladies and gentlemen, and it is a series of raids, it is not just the Freeman in Montana. The reason that you're getting all the publicity about the Freeman is because they've had a warrant out for their arrest for at least two years, these people that they're trying to arrest in Montana. And uh, there are some holding out, refuse to come out, and the feds claiming they've learned their lesson from Waco and Ruby Ridge aren't going in. And I'm going to tell you right now, if they attempt in any way to perpetrate anything that even resembles Waco or Ruby Ridge, they will be very quickly surrounded by militia from a lot of states. As long as they're doing it the way they're doing and they have lawful warrants, the militia will not interfere at all, period. Let me tell you what this revolves around. Apparently, Leroy Schweitzer, and he sent me a package of his stuff long ago, and I went through it, and it all looks perfectly legal to me. There's nothing wrong with what he started out to do. But there is a lot wrong with what they have ended up doing, ladies and gentlemen. You see, I've noticed, and I've brought it to your attention repeatedly. Somehow, patriots cannot risk, resist the temptation to allow their greed to run rampant. You see, this is set up the way... Leroy Schweitzer set it up under the law, and it is legal under the law, that says you may repay a debt in like kind. In other words, if I borrow a chicken from you, and then two months later you come and say, hey, you borrowed a chicken from me, you know, uh, I'd like to have five dollars. I can legitimately say, I don't have to give you five dollars. I'm not going to give you five dollars. Instead, I'm going to give you a chicken, because that's what I borrowed from you. Here is your chicken in return. That's legal. You see, if you go to a bank, a Federal Reserve Bank, or any bank for that matter, but Federal Reserve Banks are the most guilty of this, of all, and you sit down and you want to buy a home, and you want to borrow the money to buy your home. Okay? The home is real property. It's real. It exists. The person there says he wants $100,000, let's say. So you tell the bank that you want to borrow $80,000 because you have $20,000 in which to make a down payment and get some equity in your home. So the bank says, okay, we'll loan you this $80,000, and they sit down and and, uh, draw up the paperwork. But they don't really loan you any money. 
You see, this is where the scam comes in. The bank is not loaning you money at all. They're making a paper transaction and creating the money out of thin air with a bookkeeping entry by writing in to the book $80,000 loaned to you. And then they go to the other lending company and give them a piece of paper saying that they have paid them $80,000. And now you have to make payments to the bank on this non-existing money. Well, if the banks can do that, you can do that too. And that's what Leroy Schweitzer found out. He researched it in the law. I have all his paperwork here. And if he had done that on his house, which I believe he did, and uh, left it at that, he would have been okay. And if all these other people who had attended his classes had gone and just done that, they would be okay. But no, they wanted to go further. They wanted to get millions of dollars. <laughs> they wanted to, well, who knows what they wanted to do. I don't pretend to speak for what they wanted to do, but all of a sudden they were not discharging debt with debt, paying in like kind under the law. All of a sudden, they started filing liens against federal officials and federal property and the personal property of federal agents and officials, and then taking these liens and somehow converting them into money on a non-existing bank account. Now, I've done the research on this. This account that they refer to on their checks does not exist. That's fraud, clear and simple. The people who are being arrested across the country, and there have been several, a Elizabeth Broderick was arrested in California, a rancher was arrested in California, who had written one of these checks for $1.3 million. <laughs> Can you imagine the gall writing a check on a non-existent account signed by Leroy Schweitzer for $1.3 million and going and giving it to somebody? There were a couple of arrests in South Florida. There were a couple of arrests in the state of Arizona. And uh, in checking the propagation, I listened to the last 10 minutes of the last broadcast, and there has not been any BATF raids in the state of Arizona. No weapons have been dug up. Nobody has attacked the militia. <laughs> How do I know? Because I live here. Because I am in integrally tied to the militia of Arizona. Okay? The rumors are flying. Everybody is going crazy. Just like always, it's nothing new. It's the normal way that you all seem to like to operate. Perpetuate rumors. Don't bother checking. Anything like that. I want to set one thing straight on the broadcast night before last. We're the only broadcast that ever does it. When we're wrong, we correct it on the air. When we're wrong in Veritas, we make the correction on the front page, not buried somewhere back in the paper. <laughs> and that's the only way that responsible, real people will do it. Leroy Schweitzer was indeed arrested in Montana, not in Phoenix, Arizona. We had some law enforcement people playing games with us. Unfortunately, that sometimes happens, and even though we know that they have a history of lying, if we cannot get the truth anywhere else, sometimes we have to go with what we have, citing our sources. And we did cite our source. And that's the only correction that we need to make. Apparently, Leroy Schweitzer and David Peterson would not allow themselves to be arraigned and challenged the jurisdiction and uh, interrupted the court proceedings to the point where the judge had them bound and hauled away there in the jail. A third person who was arrested is apparently cooperating with his lawyer, has committed no crime that we can determine, uh, but did apparently participate in some planning sessions or some discussions of what the government considers to be a crime which was never carried out. Now, 
if you can put all that together, you could do it better than me because uh, nobody really knows except the people involved. And that's the truth. But if you're not involved in this this uh, scheme to make money through putting liens on somebody else's property and then uh, supposedly depositing it somewhere and then writing checks on these accounts and stuff like that. If you're not involved in that, you are in no danger from the current situation whatsoever. We did not know at first. The commanding officer of the Second Continental Army, the Republic, decided to play it safe, which is the proper thing to do. He called off the alert uh, this morning when the period of danger ended. But for those who have been participating in levying liens or, or writing liens and uh, uh, going about it, you see, they're operating outside the legal system that is accepted by the government <laughs> and by the people of this country. If what they're doing is right, they don't have to do it outside the system. It would stand up in court. And if the lower courts ruled against it and they took it to the Supreme Court, eventually it would have to be ruled upon upon the merits of the law. And if they are doing what they're doing in the law properly, they would survive that test. And if Leroy Schweitzer and David Peterson have done nothing wrong, they will survive this test, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, since they haven't been arraigned yet, it appears that they might be right, doesn't it? You see, because if they were wrong, the judge would have had them bound and gagged and would have arraigned them on the spot. But he didn't do that, did he? He had them hauled out of court and thrown back in jail, and no arraignment has taken place. But let me tell you something, and this is the truth. The media is trying to portray the freemen as the militia. The freemen are not the militia. If the militia were called up in the state of Montana, and they fit into the age group described by the law of both the state and the United States, then they would be required to grab a weapon and fall into ranks as a member. But they are not the militia. According to what I understand, they have said they are not part of the system. They have renounced the government and therefore would refuse to be called up and therefore are not militia members of their own volition. They have set aside a part of the soil of Montana and called it a separate place altogether with its own law and its own court and everything else. And folks, you can't operate a country with two, three, four, five, or six legal systems. It doesn't work. It can't work. And all of you out there who are playing that game, and I've told you this before, if you think you're going to get away with it, you're fooling yourselves. Eventually, they'll come after all of you. You see, you have no force in law. You have no powers of arrest. You don't have no powers to incarcerate. You have no army to enforce your sovereignty, as you call it. And some of you know what you're doing. Most of you don't know the slightest bit what you are doing. And that's the truth. It's one thing to become a sovereign individual. It's one thing to declare your personal sovereignty. To get out of the system, live within the law, not hurt anybody or anybody else's property, and go about your business. It's quite another thing to set up a jury-rigged court, a kangaroo court, and that is exactly what you are doing with these common law courts. They are kangaroo courts. You see, are you, not, you are not drawing the jury from the community at large. You are drawing the jury only from yourselves, therefore rigging any decision in any jury might make. That's what the people in Texas did. When the Texas State Supreme Court 
decided not to hear their legal arguments, which is what they did. And when the world court threw it back at them and said, go fish, <laughs> we're not interested in playing these silly games with you, they set up their own court. An admiralty court. These are people who are claiming sovereign nation status, setting up an international admiralty court, <laughs> and ruling in their own favor against the United States of America. <laughs> it's laughable. It's a joke. And you make every patriot and every real militia and every real militia member and uh, person who is willing to, to uh, maybe at some future date, fight and die for freedom and for the Constitution for the United States of America and the constitutions of their state look like fools, look like idiots when you play these stupid games. I've actually had people call me and say, Bill, you better, you better get in this common law movement because we're filing liens and we're going to make millions of dollars. And they get very upset when I say, no, no, you're not going to make millions of dollars. You're going to go to jail. And that's the truth. This is the only place, apparently, where you ever get a hard, cold dash of truth. You see, without a majority of the population and an army to back you up, you ain't going to fly nowhere, no how, no way. And you don't have any of those things. None of them whatsoever. And I've told you many times when you go off on these tangents, they're going to test you. They're going to arrest you and drag you into court. And if you know what you're doing and you're doing it right, you will come out okay. If you're screwing around trying to play their game and they wrote all of this stuff and they put all the traps into it and you think you know it all, you're going to jail. And that also is the truth. And all you little militia wackos out there running around, ah, should we get our guns? Should we go? Should we there, 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 there? Go take a cold shower. The militia exists solely for these purposes. On a national level, to enforce the laws of the Union, to repel invasion and to suppress insurrection. You cannot become the insurrectionist. And you cannot be the invader. And you cannot break the laws of the Union. If you do, you are not the militia. You are a band of outlaws, gangsters, thugs. Which I suspect is what some of you really are anyway. On a state level, the job of the militia is to enforce the laws of the state, repel invasion, suppress insurrection, and answer the call of the governor for any other purpose that the governor needs to call up the militia for, which is a constitutional and lawful purpose. I don't know why I'm wasting my breath, because half of you aren't going to understand half of what I'm saying anyway. From what I've heard on all these other talk shows that I've tried to listen to, while I obeyed my commander's instructions and dispersed to my assigned post, in order to avoid... doing something stupid. The rest of you are running around chasing your tails again. When will you ever learn? There will be a day in the future where it becomes obvious to all Americans that we will have to fight in defense of our constitutions and our freedoms. This is not that time ladies and gentlemen, and you don't fly off to descend someone who has taken it upon themselves to invite 
being arrested. Unless you want to go to jail yourself or get killed in the process. Now we've drawn the line with Waco. All of us across this country, we have said there will be no more Wacos. There is no Waco in progress at this time. Many of you grab a gun and go running off when some farmer calls you and tells you they're going to repossess his farm. What for? Why are you going to do that? You see, the farmer, as long as the bank was willing to give him a million dollars, didn't care <laughs> about all this stuff. Only when he missed a payment, or two payments, or three or four, and the bank came to collect the collateral, did the farmer all of a sudden think the banker was a bad guy. You see, I don't side with greed. The Second Continental Army of the Republic does not side with greed. We do not side with people who want to get a whole lot of other people killed for the wrong reasons. We must never, ever, for any reason, fire the first shot as a militia. Ever. Or even as an American people, a whole people. For if we do, we lose the support of the American people. And if we do that, the war is lost. This is not 1776 where you're going off to fight an enemy that's wearing red coats and stands shoulder to shoulder in an open field waiting for you to shoot them. You are not organized. You do not have a unified command structure. You do not have a plan. You don't even know what targets to go for. If the buffalo chip hit the fan tonight, none of you know what to do. You have no provisional government set up in case you were to luck out and win that would be able to restore law and order and stop looting and raping and murdering and pillaging and all of the things that accompany war. You don't have any of those things in place, nor have you contemplated any of those things. You're all too busy running around trying to figure out how to screw somebody else out of a dollar. We don't have that problem here. There's only one dollar in this whole town, and we all take turns holding it. Now, you all knew about those freemen in Montana a long, 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 long time ago. All of you did. You all knew that there were warrants issued for their arrest. You all knew that. You all knew that if they were right, they could have come in and voluntarily gone into court and pleaded their case and walked out into the sunshine if what they were doing was correct within the law. They didn't do that. You all knew that sooner or later, based upon those warrants, somebody was going to be sent by some bureaucrat in Washington to serve those warrants and execute those arrests. So why, in heaven's name, are you all so shocked that it has happened? 
and all of you who have been participating in this scheme and have exercised liens against government property, government officials, government officials' personal property, and have converted that into some kind of paper money orders or checks and have written checks and purchased things with those checks or money orders, you are going to be arrested also. And most of you couldn't even defend what you're doing to your neighbor, much less a judge in a court of law. So why did you even do it in the first place? I've told you over and over again, you cannot go to a class and listen to somebody talk to you for two or three or four or five days and get a stack of paperwork and go home and then start doing this stuff. It takes years of study to know what you're doing. And even though Leroy Schweitzer knew what he was doing, he couldn't confine it to his personal business. He had to have more money. And don't tell me that's not true, because I know it's true. I've been following these people for a long time. Leroy Schweitzer might be able to defend himself in court, because I've seen what he's able to do. But most of you out there couldn't defend yourself in your own common law court. Much less a federal court. And that's too bad.
Now, that's what this is really all about, ladies and gentlemen. Most of you don't understand it. You see, in the New World Order, you will not be allowed to be a sovereign. You will not be allowed to own private property. And there certainly isn't going to be any common law. And you cannot exist if you don't adopt the system. Unless you're able to hide underground or in deep forests, far out in the rural areas. And that's what will happen. The militias and patriots will control the rural areas. And the New World Order will probably control the cities. And there will be a fight for years. Many years. But you see, those freemen knew what they were doing. Given they are courageous in their convictions, and I admire them. And personally, I believe that the stance that they have taken is the correct one. For for ten people. When I die, I want to die for my family and 260 million people if I have to die. They knew what they were doing. They knew the risk that they were taking. And they knew that sooner or later, somebody was going to come after them. You cannot take sides with ten against 260 million. I hope you understand that. We are fighting socialism. They are fighting socialism. They chose to fight it before everyone else was ready or prepared or before the civilian populace was willing to back them in their effort. And you better learn a big lesson from this. Without the support of the majority of the American population, you have lost already. And that's why the major media is demonizing patriots and militia and freemen and everyone else. They know what is at stake. They are propagandizing the sheeple. I told you to do that a long time ago. I told you to begin your own media campaign a long time ago, but you have not done it. You will not listen. You are stupid. And that is the truth. Unless you win the hearts and minds of the American people, you cannot win against the New World Order. You will not win against the New World Order. And if you even think that you might even be able to try, you are worse than stupid. Have I been butting my head against the wall here for years? I thought I had some kind of a listening audience out there that was intelligent and that was listening and that would learn to operate properly in order to be able to win, not lose. I'm not a loser. If you're a loser, I don't want you on my side. I don't like to lose. I don't like to be around losers. I don't like to be around people who say I can't or I won't. Or I'm just one lonely little person. What can I do? Or I'm too busy. Or I've got to make a living. Well, ta-ta to you. What do you think the rest of us have to do? You want me and others like me to pull your wagon for you through life. You want me and others like me to save your butts. You want us to tell you what to do. You want us to give you information, and then you want to run off and do all these stupid, idiotic things that ensure that you are a loser and that you will lose. I'm sorry, but I don't understand it. I just don't get it, folks, at all. Not at all. Now, if all of a sudden the feds were to do like they did at Waco and send in helicopters and start shooting down through the roof where these tin freemen are holed up and send in a tank to bash in their home and then burn them down, oh-ho, 
after Ruby Ridge and Waco, that would turn the tables. We would be fully justified in sending an army of militia to kick their butts. But that's not happening. And they seem to have gained some brains since Waco. At least they claim they're not going to let it happen. And if they're smart, they won't, because I'll be first in line with my rifle if they do. But until something like that happens, folks, forget it. You have no support amongst the people of the nation. Those freemen have been demonized. You have been demonized. I have been demonized. Because you can't follow instructions. You can't think properly. You have not set yourself up to win. How many of you have appointed public affairs officers? How many of you set up a media program? How many of you are working in the community as militia, as patriot groups to show the community who and what you really are? Well, I'll tell you, absolutely none of you. Oh, yes, some of you have appointed public affairs officers, but for the rest of what I just said, zero, zip, nothing. You're not doing it. You have no way to counteract the 6 o'clock news. And if you can't counter the 6 o'clock news, then Joe Blow, average sheeple, has no way of knowing that you are not the terrorist that they say that you are. Stuart Webb, a notorious government disinformation blabber, recently said on talk radio that Somebody would blow up an airplane and it would be blamed upon patriots. And just recently, in the news, they said that the Freemen were planning to blow up an airplane. Can you make the connection, folks? Are you listening to me? Do you listen to anyone? Are you capable of exercising your brain to put two and two together without somebody having to tell you what two and two is? You put me in these positions where I have to talk to you like children, and I don't like that. Because I'll tell you, quite frankly, I don't want to be your daddy. The state wants to be your daddy. And if you don't stop being children, the state will be your daddy. Because I'm not adopting any more kids. And I can't fight the state by myself. I need all of you. We need all of you. But we need you exercising your mental abilities, using the intellect that God gave you, with that brain that lies between your ears that is no smaller than mine or anyone else's who has learned to think. Ninety percent of you spend ninety percent of your time passing rumors from one mouth to another, or from one fax machine to another, without one iota of what it is you're doing, or whether or not it's true, or what the end consequence of it is going to be. None at all. It amazes me. I sit back and watch, and it just uh, its sickening. It almost breaks my heart to see this happening. And then all across the country, <laughs> people are hanging on the freemen. It's not the way it works, ladies and gentlemen. Not at all. If you were facing 
Men wearing red coats, lined up with muskets, shoulder to shoulder, in an open field. You could think about those things. But that's not what you're up against. And you better stop thinking about those things, because that's a fool's game. It's going to be hard enough when we have to fight as a whole people, together, against what we face. Don't go off half-cocked and lose it all for ten people who knew exactly what they were doing and knew that someone would come after them and claim that they are right in the law. If they're right in the law, they don't need you. And if they're wrong in the law, they are criminals and do not deserve you. And none of us know, really, which it is at this point. Anyway, do we? I was going to do Monday the bid on Karl Marx. Then all this jazz happened. Then I was going to do it last night, and everybody was dispersed, and I figured, boy, I better give them some moral support. So, you heard that rewind. Would have been better than a live show from a dispersal area anyway. And I believe it was. And then I was going to do it tonight. And then all day today I heard all this Absolute bullshit on every talk radio station across the country. And then I saw on CNN today <laughs> the attempt of the Communist News Network to say that the freemen are the militia. <laughs> and that we're all racist, terrorists, and every other bad thing that you can think of in the world. And what did your people do? Nothing. We issued press releases. We did what we were supposed to do, and because of that, the Second Continental Army of the Republic got some good press today. And we made the militias look good. We made patriots look good, and we set them straight in the law. And some stations, television, and radio actually carried our press release, although in a very abbreviated form, and in the state of Oklahoma, they even interviewed our station chief, who told them the truth. She is the PAO for four states, as well as the commanding officer. So what is the lesson to be learned from all of this? Does anybody have any idea? Well, you see, since you didn't earn any, <laughs> you didn't learn any lessons from all of the things that have happened in the past, what makes me think there are going to be any lessons learned from this experience? Why should I think that anything's going to change. <laughs> it's going to be same old stuff tomorrow, right? Same old rumors flying around, same old trying to make a buck through whatever you can, every shady deal that comes along. How many of you were missed up in the Jay Schwashinger thing? A lot of you. How many of you were tagged on to Treasury Gate? A lot of you. A lot of you still are. Still get letters saying, Oh, you shouldn't say that about Treasury Gate. Tommy Buckley's going to cash that, and we're going to get millions. No, you're not. You're not going to get a penny. You lose all the pennies that you put into it. Every one of them. Because it's a scam. 
You fall for every scam that comes along. Then all of a sudden you learn if you convened a common law court and you had somebody that could bang a gavel and say, Yeah. You could levy a lien against somebody and make millions of dollars. Right? Well, I know it's right because I've heard it from your own lips probably five million times in letters and phone calls and everything else. Bill just wrote you a letter just to let you know we're setting up our common law court here in Illinois. And we're going to start levying liens and we're going to make millions of dollars. <laughs> the only way you can make millions of dollars, folks, is through the sweat off your brow, if you're smart enough to do it, if you're smart enough to use what money you earn wisely. Bob Swan was here, showed you a way to protect yourself and your money, stay within the system, not risk getting into trouble. And for those of you who didn't want to stay in the system, you could do the same thing outside the system because it's all set up according to your right under the Constitution to contract and to execute a trust. You don't have to be in the system to do that. I and mean, I'm not selling these trusts tonight. I have no interest in it. I'm just using an example. But no, you want to get millions of dollars by doing nothing. <laughs> it amazes me. Just absolutely amazes me, folks. I am blown away by this whole experience. Ever since I started, I started out thinking, gee, you know, if I just start to inform the American people, they're the most well-educated, smartest people in the world. My God, look what we've done. They'll all get together and they'll find out what the truth is and we'll straighten everything out. Boy, was I surprised. Because that's not what happened. That's not even what's likely to happen. What's most likely to happen is what always happens all the time and was always has happened throughout the history of the world. Sooner or later it will become so oppressive that most people will knuckle into the state in order to get some kind of preferential treatment and security from the state. And a small percentage of smart, intelligence, freedom-loving people will take up arms to restore freedom to everyone. Even those who don't even, in the slightest way, deserve it. And then it'll start all over again. <laughs> trying to stay free and somebody else trying to take it away. If you don't believe that, folks, start reading some history books. That's what has always happened throughout the history of the world. Most of you, I've come to find out, who listen to this broadcast are intelligent, do care, but wouldn't get off your butts if it required some risk to yourself or to your property or to your family in a million years. And that's the truth. A lot of you wouldn't even write a letter because you're afraid to get on some list. <laughs> There's only one list, folks. If you're not one of them, you're one of us. and You're already on it. You're going to be a slave in the New World Order or you're going to fight for freedom. One of the two. But don't even think about fighting until the time is right to fight. Until they do something so oppressive and so vile that we have the sympathy of the American people and they must fire the first shot. Until that time comes... You are beating your head against the wall if you think you are going to do anything other than prepare and wait. Organize. Become disciplined. I'm going to tell you something you're not going to like, but most of your militia units, when the buffalo chip hits the fan, will disintegrate almost instantly. You have members that will not take up arms 
to fight for freedom, even though now they profess that they will. You have people who will not obey orders. You will have people who are not prepared will become a burden upon the rest of the unit. You will have people who are not trained and therefore will be dangerous. You have not set up a civilian support system to be able to receive information and to function as a source of supply and protection and safe houses. In fact, most of you have never even thought of it. And here, you want to go off to war for ten guys holed up in a house because they did something that they knew in the beginning would bring this upon them? Why? So they can cash their check and make a million dollars or three million dollars or four million dollars tomorrow? Are you crazy? If it were you that the feds were surrounding, do you think that they would form up in their militia and pick up their guns and come to your aid? I'm going to tell you right now, no such luck. They would not. Do you know who went to Waco, Texas to help the Branch Davidians? Me and Linda Thompson and about 20 other people, and that's it, out of the whole nation. How does that grab you? You like that? How about those odds? Don't you think Linda and I and some of those other 20 people in Waco, Texas, felt a little insecure? You better bet your butt we did, but we were still there. We were there. We cared. Linda did some things that could have got her killed. And so did I. At one point I had a gun poked in my nose simply because I took a picture. While all of you were sitting on your butts. And if you decided to run up there and do something, how many of you think would really show up? I don't think it'd be very many folks, but the ones who would show up. For the most part are already known. You have a lot more thinking to do and a lot more planning and a lot more learning and preparing before you even dream of taking on the power, the money, and the machine, and the technology that you think you're going to take on. We can do it with a concerted effort when the time comes with those who are truly dedicated and will actually do it to protect freedom and restore the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. To put down the insurrection and the treason that is occurring in this country. But you're not even going to dream about doing it when most of the nation is against you for ten men who have been portrayed as terrorists, criminals. Bank robbers is what they're being portrayed as. And as people who have been planning to blow up an airplane. I hope this is sinking into you because you need it. You need it. You need it, ladies and gentlemen. You have to understand what you are doing. You cannot operate on emotion. 
You must operate from your intellect upon well-laid plans based upon facts, not imagination, not rumor, not wannabe, not wishes, not desires. And if you can't do that, then you better not do anything at all, because if you do, you're going to get whooped and imprisoned or killed. When it's the right time, believe me, being killed will be preferable to being a slave in the New World Order. With that in mind, we will all have something to fight for. I've got to tell you this also. A lot of people out there profess that they're going to fight for freedom, and they don't even know what the word means. Freedom to many of you means you're okay if you believe what I believe. But if you don't believe what I believe, you can't do that. You can't say that. You can't work here. You can't live here. You're not an American. And if you were in charge, you'd put those people away. So you'd better, while you're at it, get a grip on what freedom really is. Because if you don't, I'm not going to fight for you or with you. And I hope you got that loud and clear, ladies and gentlemen. Because I'm not the only one. You see, some of you are more dangerous than the New World Order ever thought of being. And if some of you ever came to power in this country, they'd be burning witches at the stake again. They'd be burning heretics at the stake. There would be an inquisition where people would be tortured. And don't try to tell me that's not true. Because I know better. Good night. Think about all of this and think about it hard. And God bless each and every single one of you. You need that blessing. Where did that come from? Sounded like we lost the telephone. And I don't know if we did or not. But that sounds like a lot of things happen. Don't believe the devil. I don't believe the sun. For the truth is not the same without the lies he made up.